spotlight on the giants of the road. Welcome to the FIA European Truck Racing Championship and welcome to the Autodrome in Most. Current leader of the pack is Sascha Lenz with 40 points. He spoke to Andreas Ahn. I think all guys push a little bit more the truck and um, yeah, we are happy when we are on P1, but we are happy on P3 after this weekend. But uh, my favorite is P1. It's been a while, but the memory is quite fresh for Stefan Faust who crashed into the barriers at the Ungaro ring. But what about his truck? Is it fit? We have uh, only fixed it in uh, Ungaro ring. It was uh, not so, so much. At home we make the normal service and the normal new part. points down on Lenz is Adam Lachko and he's competing on, of course, home soil. I hope we do the best here in the most. What does it mean? First. <laughs> no, we will see. It's easy to say but uh, harder to do. Truck racing is often a family business but it's never easy competing with your father like Lucas Hahn is now entering as a race by race starter. Last year it was the seventh place and I will look that I'm maybe more in the front but we have to look how is the weather and how are the conditions and I want to be in the top 10 and that's my goal. This is round two of the FAA European Truck Racing Championship. Welcome here at the Autodrome in Most. Finally, the fans are back in the paddock. The family is back. That's good to see. But we did expect a lot. But we didn't expect it to be, as Norbert Kirsch was pointing out. You know, epic. I've, I've been racing for 15 years, but <laughs> I never raced on such circuit. That there was so big contrast, you know, to, the, to one part of the circuit and the other part of the circuit. Because um, in the middle sector, it was so wet that before the red flag I was on the on the on the grass as well and I think probably others and we're just ahead of the qualifying which took place in let's say two countries two worlds and one side it was really clear sky and on the other side it was raining a lot so this was clearly unusual for truck racing and this is on board with Jochen Hahn. The two of them going straight on, on the grass. And that's where all of the gravel and all sorts got kicked up earlier on. And Anthony Janiek, there he is, arrives on the scene from the left-hand side, aquaplaning as well. Look at that, so many of them going off. So it was Anthony's truck spinning that really kicked up the grass. And of course, Jochen as well. But that just shows you, even though, as I just mentioned there, the weight of these machines, they can still spin around and around and around. And here it is, he can't do anything about it and smacks into the side of Jochen's truck. Almost going up the bank there as well. The two of them managed to carry on and he's very lucky indeed. I hate to say it, but he's very lucky that there wasn't still a truck coming around that corner there as he re-entered the circuit. They just about got away with that one there. And like you saw the damage, you know, it's all superficial on these trucks. There wasn't anything too severe and it was all fixable by the time the session was over, but it can go uh, just as badly wrong here as it can in any other form of motorsport. It's mad. We do see here the great perspective of the smart witness system and the crash between Anthony Janiek and Jochen Hahn due to this really strange weather conditions, as Janiek pointed out. Uh, my talk uh, today it's okay for the condition is very very difficult. The raining, no raining, I don't know. So everybody knew what was going around with this rainy, sunny condition and now we are ahead of race one. Let's get started and let's keep on rolling. To start the weekend at the tricky Autodrome Most, well, it was moist. We started the first race under yellow flag conditions, nobody allowed to overtake, just so the drivers could get acclimatised with the conditions of the circuit. It was Norbert Kish 
leading us away from six-time champion Jochen Hahn. Everybody tiptoeing their way around the first lap just to get used to what the track had to give back to them. Norbert Key showing that traction was definitely at a premium. But then we got things underway on lap two. The green flag flying and Norbert Kish flying out in front. The Hungarian disappearing up the road while all of the other drivers battled behind him for positions in the top three. Lenz having a really good go at Jochen Hahn, trying to get through into second place, knowing that for the championship, he had to close down the gap to Norbert Kish in front. And a few laps in, into turn 15, Sasha Lenz got the job done with this beautiful move around the outside, leaving Hahn to defend from everybody else. Adam Lachko soon displaced Antonio Albacete, or at least tried to on multiple occasions at the expense of the bollards. But everybody was vying for positions behind Hahn, trying to be the first driver to break his defences, while Norbert Kiesch quite literally disappeared up the road, having a few moments along the way on the greasy surface, but Sasha Lenz would soon start chasing him down very, very quickly. He was also showing that the surface wasn't the easiest to drive on. Meanwhile, throughout all of it, Steffi Halm had gradually made her way up the order as well in the number 44 machine. She'd taken advantage of some of the trucks battling around her and gained a few places from her original starting position in the closing laps. Eventually, though, Sasha Lenz would really start reeling in Norbert Kiesch, the lead gap coming down to less than half a second as they crossed the line a couple of times consecutively. With different lines being taken every single lap, Sasha Lenz trying to throw everything at the Hungarian to dethrone him from the lead of the race. Eventually, though, it would be to no avail. Norbert Kiesch would hold on with superior pace over Sasha Lenz towards the end of the race to take the chequered flag and his third race win in a row. Lenz would do some fantastic damage limitation though and hold on to second ahead of hometown hero Adam Lachko getting Bagheera racing a podium ahead of Antonio Albacete. Just behind them, Halm and Janiek very close across the line. Steffi Halm taking a fantastic, fantastic result to get her weekend underway in fifth place. But Norbert Kiesch the winner and Sasha Lenz finishing in second place just behind. A battle that we can guarantee will go on and on all season long. The Hungarian was very happy to get very, very close behind Sasha Lenz in the championship, who said he was taking a reserved approach towards the championship to make sure that he scored consistent points. But champagne for Norbert Kiesch and a great celebration to start his weekend off. He had time after the race, though, when he wasn't spraying champagne, to speak to Christina. The circuit was more wet. It was better for us. Probably we opted for a little bit uh, too much of a rain setup, you know, like with the tires that we that we talked about. And you know, towards the end, Sasha was really fast and and catching me quite quite fast. And I was I was struggling a little bit with the drying up circuit. But you know, it was good enough. So I'm really happy for the victory. I'm really happy for the team. And uh, yeah, thankful for the guys for the for the hard work that they put in the summer so that, you know, we can be here again and uh, perform on this level. So Norbert Kish takes a hat-trick of wins and hopes to get more as the weekend goes on, showing superior pace once again. Not even a second separated him and Sasha Lenz. Adam Lachko was third ahead of Antonio Albacete with Steffi Halm fifth. Then it was Janiek, Kurzim, Calvay, Breton and Rennie Reiner. Following them was Jamie Anderson, Lucas Hahn, Heinrich Clemenshacker, Alia Koloch and Luke Garrett. Two important DNFs though, Jochen Hahn and Stefan Fass. But the drivers now concentrate on what they can do to recover from those DNFs in race two. Can Norbert Kish get another victory? Can Sasha Lenz grab one? You'll have to join us then.
Hello from the Autodrome in Moss. We are ahead of race two in this weekend in the Czech Republic. I want to try to, to, to defend uh, everyone because there is uh, big guys uh, next to me and uh, uh, at the back. So yeah, I really want to, to keep my place and uh, keep my position, sorry, and uh, we'll see. After a very exciting race one, which saw Norbert Kish take his third win of the season, it was time to get race two underway at Autodron Moss. The reverse grid had put Theo Calve on pole position, and he lined up alongside a very, very smoky Andre Kersim. It would later turn out that there was no problem with the truck at all, and the smoke could not be actually diagnosed. But Theo Calve would lead us away, no yellow flag lap like we had in the first race. But Kurzim got a fantastic start on the drier side of the track and would be ahead into turn one. Penalty markers were sent flying very early on in the race, which would lead to a number of warnings about track limits and even drive through penalties later on. But Norbert Kish had started a fantastic run through the field very early on, here giving Anthony Janiek a little bit of encouragement through the first chicane on his way towards the podium positions. It would be a good three laps of Norbert piling the pressure on time after time as Janiek tried to catch up with the leaders. But soon enough, Kish would get ahead out of the first chicane and then set his sights on Theo Calve. The young Frenchman was far ahead of anybody else in the chrome category in this race, but that didn't mean there was no pressure on his shoulders and he crumbled slightly under said pressure for a moment into turn 10. Norbert Kish taking the advantage and disappearing off up the road after race leader Andre Kurzim. Alia Kolok was in some trouble with damage to the front of her Bagheera Racing Freightliner. But at the very front, it was Norbert Kish doing what Norbert Kish does best and piling the pressure onto Andre Kurzim, even sounding the horn for pretty much half a lap to try and dislodge him in some way. Norbert clearly trying every tactic in the book to get through, but it was a brilliant fight to watch that eventually would come to a head on the final lap. Out of the chicane, Norbert got a fantastic run. Andre tried to close the door and defend, and there was contact into turn four. Norbert would stay alongside and around the outside of the right-hander at turn five. He'd be on the inside for turn six, where he would get the lead and stay there. Kuzim tried to fight back as best he could, though, but unfortunately wasn't able to make it work. And the guys over at Smart Witness having a long, hard look at this one after the race, wondering, did Kuzim move over? Did Norbert put his nose down the inside? Either way, it resulted in a 10-second penalty for Norbert Kish, which would drop him down to third place at the end, meaning Andre Kuzim inherited the win and Theo Calve would take second place. But on the road, it was Norbert Kish who extended his lead quite a lot by the end of the final lap. Andre Kurzim finishing just behind him on the road and Theo Calve holding on very well to an overall podium at Autodrom Most. Some spectacular drifting and stunt, <laughs> stunt driving essentially from Norbert Kish at the end of the race once again, proving his vehicle control. He would line up in the pit lane, not knowing that the penalty was coming. Kirzin finishes second. They congratulate each other and had a quick chat about the incident. Not, one, not knowing really what would happen later on in the day. The podium presentation went ahead as planned. Champagne and smiles for all the drivers. But Christina was there to ask the questions we all wanted to know the answers to. What do you think about the incident in the last lap from your perspective? Yes, I know Nobi is a very hard driver sometimes, uh, but now we have to look at the videos and yes, uh, maybe I can get a little uh, yes, advantage and uh, maybe we can go on the first place. We don't know. 
but uh, I think it was a normal race situation and everything is okay. I stuck my nose in, why should I lift, you know, so I didn't lift. And then I think he noticed that I'm there when we touch and then he gives me space. And then we go side by side to the next turn and I overtake him, you know, so I think, I think it shouldn't be a big problem. I mean, I didn't, you know, push him like in a turn or whatever. You know, in, in the exit, I had a much better exit, stuck my nose in. He tried to close it and force me to the, to, the, to the grass, you know, I don't know, we'll see what they think about it, but either way, I'm happy. So the results then, as at the time, Norbert Kish took the win from Andre Kurzim and Teo Calve, but a penalty given to him later in the day would drop Norbert to third. Anthony Janiek was fourth, Steffi Halm was fifth ahead of Antonio Albacete, Sasha Lenz, Adam Lachko, Shane Brayton and Jochen Hahn had recovered into 10th place. Jamie Anderson, Lucas Hahn, Stefan Fast, Rennie Reiner, Heinrich Clement Hecker, Alia Kolok and Luke Garrett would round out the finishes. And that would round out the racing action for the first day here at Ord to Drum Must. The second day will have another qualifying session, Super Bowl and two more races as well. So we hope that they'll be just as exciting as these ones were. Robert Kish received a 10 second penalty and he ended up third on the podium. Andre Kurzem first and Theo Kalvi second. Smart Witness provides the onboard cameras, recorders, and all the other technical instruments to provide a video on demand service. Kim, let's say this simple. Maybe you at home know some video assistant referees watching football. It is comparable, the system Smart Witness. How do you do that? Yeah, absolutely. It's exactly the same. Uh, the VAR that we do with our, with our paperwork, exactly the same. Compared with uh, two years ago, we were taking maybe 30 minutes to look at the data. Uh, but with a smart witness, we literally can have it now within 30 seconds. Uh, very quick system. And this is day two at this race weekend at the Autodrome in Moss. And we do have honorably visitors. I mean, you're talking about sustainable fuel, which is 100% from vegetables that comes. Of course, it's monitored now, and then the results from the day they plant till it reaches the uh, uh, tank, that's very important. So the image is different. What I believe, even me, I mean, you, when you see uh, the black smoke straight away, you know it's, it's unfriendly to the environment. Now the uh, changes is there. It's good here to see um, um, how uh, even the truck racing is, is, is uh, starting to be uh, strong. So a lot of changes as I can see. To start Sunday off, we had a fantastic qualifying session that would see only 17 thousandths of a second between eventual pole sitter Jochen Hahn and Norbert Kish. But down to turn one and two, there was even less than that between them. Norbert making his intentions very clear and shoulder barging his way through to the front with Adam Lachko following him through past defending champion Jochen Hahn. He would eventually drive off up the road as he always does, while Rennie Reiner's opening lap contact would lead to this delamination of a tyre, meaning he'd have to limp it back over the course of the next two laps. He would eventually get back to the pits, but the sorry state of what was left of his truck would have to wait till the next race. A very scary moment indeed, but hats off to Luke Garrett, his accident avoidance was absolutely on point. Norbert Kish opened up a lead, as he usually does once he gets out in front, almost two seconds a lap quicker than everybody else, 
while everyone fought behind him. Sasha Lenz here making contact with Jochen Hahn. He soon went off after Adam Latchko trying to grab second place, but the yellow flags would be out and their racing would be halted by Luke Garrett, who broke down with just one lap to go. Norbert Kiesch would eventually take yet another win this season with 21 seconds as an advantage over everybody else, with Adam Latchko just about holding on to second place ahead of Sasha Lenz and Jochen Hahn in fourth. Another win to add to the very impressive tally this season for Norbert Kiesch, and he gave this very interesting interview to Christina. 2.201 was a fast lap, I mean... Yeah, it's quite interesting because basically I can do the same pace in the qualifying as in the race as well because this is like almost the same same lap time within one tenth what I could do in qualifying so because obviously we don't have any qualifying mode or whatever but we suspect that others maybe have some qualifying mode for you know that they turn up the engine or something just for one lap which, which we cannot do because it's not allowed by a man it's it, we, we don't have opportunity but I think uh, maybe if Echo and maybe maybe the Bagheera guys have that for one lap. You know, I'm not sure where is this difference is coming from. That interesting look at things, though, via slight misunderstanding, certainly caused a stir in the paddock. But either way, Norbert Kish took an absolutely demanding victory over Lachko and Lenz, with Hahn just behind. Teo Calve and Anthony Janiak were fifth and sixth ahead of Britain. Albathetti, Harm, and Lucas Hahn getting a top ten. Andre Kurzim 11th ahead of Anderson, Kolok, Fass, Clement Hecker and Luke Garrett as everyone looked forward to the final race of the weekend. There was really a lot to talk about and the accusations of Norbert Kish were quite heavy. This is why we talked to Jan Kalivoda, team boss of Bugira as well. I think it's funny when Norbert says something like this because honestly, if we have a trick, obviously it's not working <laughs> because we are still behind Norby, but of course we do everything possible to be as fast as possible in the, in the time practice. So the teams now have the time to cool down a bit and the fans do have the time to get some autographs. They are back at the paddock. With the reverse grid putting Antonio Albacete on pole position, he and Shane Brayton wanted to really prove a point in the final race of the weekend at Most. Neither of them had taken a race win yet this season, and they wanted to get their first ones at this very special and technical circuit. So they got their elbows out early on. Shane Brayton almost shoving Antonio off the circuit, but unfortunately not getting the position. Jochen Hahn would retire early with steering issues. At least he knew his indicator was working. As Sasha Lenz was then the one to come forward, overtaking Shane Brayton. And before we'd even noticed it, he overtook Albathetti off camera. The battles then began further down. Stefan Fast getting very acquainted with the front left wheel of Jamie Anderson's truck, with Rene Reiner watching closely as Sasha Lenz managed to extend his race lead at the front. Nobody could seem to touch him though. Later on, it was what we'd call a Norbert Kish esque performance. But the battles and the duos continued all the way up and down the order, providing a lot of entertainment lap after lap and corner after corner. But eventually the win would go to Sasha Lenz. Not too many positions shuffled around behind him, but Antonio Albacete would take second position just ahead of Brayton, Lachko and Norbert Kish, who would bring home a fantastic top five finish. Lachko also really providing the showmanship in front of his home fans here in the Czech Republic. A lot of fun to watch as Sasha Lenz celebrates and speaks to Christina. So that you, you saw that Shane was doing a little mistake during and onto the start and finish line, and then he knew he could overtake because there was this right turn, and there was there he saw his chance to overtake. And champagne aplenty for our very deserved podium finishes. Sasha Lenz, Antonio Abathete, 
and Shane Britton. Adam Lachko was fourth ahead of Norbert Kish after a great battle all race long. Theo Calvé and Anthony Janiek inseparable this weekend ahead of the great Lucas Hahn, Jamie Anderson and Andre Kurzim all having good strong drives in the final race of the weekend. Stefan Fass 11th ahead of René Reiner, Luke Merritt, Elia Kolok and Heinrich Clemens Hecker rounds out the field for the final race of the weekend here in the Czech Republic. But now, as we head out of the Czech Republic, we look at the overall standings. Norbert Kish has the championship lead, 84 points to the 81 of Sasha Lenz. Adam Lachko is third on 69, 20 points clear of Antonio Albacete. Jochen Hahn comes away in fifth place, just two points ahead of fellow Iveco driver Steffi Halm. Theo Calve is seventh ahead of Shane Brereton. Anthony Janiak is ninth. And Andre Kurzim rounds out the top 10 in the championship. Yes, the cleaning machine is on the circuit right now. This was the second round of the FAA European Truck Racing Championship. Second round and what is left? Two bottles of champagne empty. See you soon.